and we save and check the recording and we're good probably have the force speed bug right now I don't really care all right so we cannot bring anybody we'll proceed alone Just make sure that this thing wears off by recasting it. You may be asking yourselves, why would Revan care about getting revenge on Hulus? Shouldn't he be focusing on bigger things, like rescuing his love? And well, uh, the answer to that would be, Revan isn't thinking straight right now. He is enraged that uh, he's been deceived. By Hulis, yet more lies being thrown at him, and uh, I think it probably hit a hit a soft spot with uh, with uh, what happened with Bastila and all the lies that were built up around around that. He never really had a, an opportunity to really take his anger out on anything. So, hmm? oh, it's you again. I'll just let you pass. The boys in the office may need authorization in triplicate, but not me. Good hunting out there. Yeah, he's not thinking straight, and he's hell-bent on getting revenge on Hulis for wasting his time and deceiving him. And boy howdy, it's a good thing he brought enough revenge for the whole class, because, man, this is going to be a hell of a fight. Um, I'm going to need... It's a good thing I'm not thrown right into combat here, that's all I have to say. What do we have here, anyway? We've got a Gina Harridan Hunter, another Hunter... Jane Khan, Seni Vec, Seni Vec. He's the guy who gave us the data pad in the first place. We got Hulis, another hunter, and another hunter. Four hunters. I'm fighting seven people here all on my own. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but uh, we're definitely going to try. And if not, I'm going to get some people into my party. But uh, we'll see. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. I am not surprised to see you here, Revan. I am surprised you came alone, however. I thought you would know by now how dangerous we Gina Harridan are. I killed the other overseers. I can kill you too, Hulis. The other overseers were alone and unprepared. I am ready for you, and I have friends. Goodbye, Revan. Our time together was interesting. Brothers of the Gino Haradan, attack! Alright, well, who are we going after first? We gotta clean up some of the, uh, the little ones. Oh, of course it removed all of our buffs. Yeah, naturally. That's fine. Cool. Journal entry added. Okay. Alright, I need to get all my stuff on here. And I'm gonna quickly leave it down. That's one down. I'm leaping over to that one next. Now that didn't really work too well, but uh... Jane Khan, you are a hunter. Let's go with you next. Yeah. You're dead. Alright, that's good. I want to heal. And we're jumping to you as well. Goodbye, Senny. You were not long for this world. Who lists my friend? My friend. Very lovely to see you. Oh. Get wrecked. <laughs> gonna have to whip up seven more coffins. Grave digger of this town's gonna be having a wonderful time. Huge boom in business. 300 credits, Gina Harridan Blaster. Alright. I'll look at my journal entries in a moment. 
300 credits, an advanced, an advanced med pack, adrenal alacrity, advanced repair kit, Gino Herod, and poison blade. Didn't get poisoned. Okay, music, you can, you can not now. More remains, an environment shield level three. Damn, bought that for no reason. Adrenal strength. You, sir, what do you have? You have nothing. Senny. My friend, three frag grenades. It wasn't enough to save you. And a Hulis. 500 credits in advanced med pack, hyper adrenal alacrity, life support pack, and Gina Harridan mesh armor. Get items. Quickly look over all of these guys and make sure they have nothing else on them. And I'm gonna kill those raid, because why not? More money is more money. Yes, yes. Let's go do that real quick. So I don't have much hard drive space left. I'm running on e empty here. Don't, don't die to the raid now. Yeah, I gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Sorry. Sorry. My mistake. <laughs> Get me out of here. You still following me? Oh, goodness. Another one. Okay. Um. That one's blocked, so that's good. Sorted here. Okay, I gotta go. Just kidding. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> go away. Probably still after me. Yep. Well, this is life now. <laughs> oh, I should have brought out my party for this. What was I thinking? If I stop, I'll, he'll probably kill me. Okay, okay. Gotta get a heal in. Good. And then what? I'm gonna go for a flurry. Damn it. Got him. Okay, wow. Yeah, that would have been game over. That would not have been good. Let's uh, loot all these and get back inside where it's safe. And I'm also going to check out all those items we got. Okay, one, two, three. Cool. There are only four? Interesting. Gimme. I don't think we killed one over there, did we? No. Okay. Stressful. Alright, let's look at our items. And the journal entries. Uh, completed quests. Gina Harridan. You met Hulis in the Dune Sea, but the traitor was not alone. He and his followers ambushed you in the hopes to forever silence what you know about the Gina Harridan, resulting in a savage battle. Yeah. And he is dead. And I am alive. That should be in completed quests now. I don't know why it's not. But uh, yeah, we are done with everything except for Candorus. And uh, Juhani is done as well. Obviously, Bastila. Let's take a look at our items. Jenna Harridan Poison Blade. It's the same one as we had before that we sold. We will be selling that one as well for what money we may gain from it. Um, we have a Gina Harridan Blaster. Weapon proficiency blaster pistol, 2 to 7 damage energy. Critical th range is 23 meters. Critical threat 20 to 20 times 2. Balanced in the offhand, if used in the offhand. Attack modifier plus 5. Not bad, but the damage is pretty low on it. 
Uh, the Dina Harridan created this blaster as a tool to strike against well-protected assassination targets. Its remarkable accuracy makes for a perfect makes makes it the perfect weapon for precision long-range strikes. Not bad. It's not upgradable though. So, uh, more frag grenades, of course. Dino Harridan mesh armor, armor proficiency light, defense bonus of seven plus five max dexterity bonus. Skills stealth plus four, dexterity plus three. Wow, that's a contender to replace missions. Uh, other armor now. I kind of regret buying it. <laughs> This perfectly balanced armor provides maximum protection without hampering a Gina Harridan agent's ability to stalk his prey in total secrecy. Cool. An assortment of stims, some more med packs, and one that's different for some reason. A life support pack, advanced repair kits, raid plates, which we'll be selling. We got this environment shield level 3. Unfortunately, we had bought one, so a few things we probably could have saved on buying, but we did not, but... Oh well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Let me get back inside. And I think, um... I will just return direct to the Ebon Hawk. Now. Do the last of my selling. And uh, we'll call it good here, probably. Let's see. We're hanging on to the Gino Harridan. Uh, armor. Probably. This pistol, I don't know about. The only one who could possibly make use of that would be Mission, and I think hers is already better, so this is going to go bye-bye as well. And... Is that all we got from all of this? I think that was it, right? Yeah. Just another droid shield. Which we'll just keep, I guess. And our armor, of course. Okay, guys. I think that is going to be it. Um, I'm going to, in between episodes, um, and before I close out this one, I'm going to fly around and pick up some items, and I'll get right back with you in a few minutes. Uh, be right back. All right, guys, so I just finished up our Christmas shopping, as it were. Just took the time to planet hop all over the galaxy to get all of our companions some nice new goodies. And, uh, pretty much obliterate our credit supply. Turns out those 7,000 credits that we got on Yavin 4 station were actually intended to be there. So, I could have spent them if I wanted to, but, uh... I, it just, just so happens that I sold a bunch of other stuff, and uh, we wound up with about 11,000 credits there, thereabouts. Um, so I guess I should go over what I bought for all of the companions. I don't think anything has changed on my main character. He still has his nerve enhancement package equipped. I could have bought him, like, another implant for level 2, but I find that uh, level 2 implants are actually few and far between. They're kind of hard to find. Um, so I, I, for, I forewent that, and uh, instead, um, for Jolie, I decided to buy the Verpine Bond Gauntlets from Korriban. Demolitions plus six. I won't read the uh, description, because I believe we read them before, but, um, I mean, that's totally useless for him. I just kind of like the look of these, and also I wanted um, some stabilizer gauntlets for, uh, for uh, Zalbar to use buff his demolition skill, so I figured uh, demo plus six is fine on um, Jolie. For Jahani, I don't think anything changed for her. I didn't get her anything else. Um, contemplated switching her gauntlets for something else, but I did not wind up doing that. So let us go move on to some of the other party members. Let's grab uh, Karth and Candorous. And uh, these two are the ones that I spent the most money on, I would say. 
overall, so we'll start with Karth. Uh, for Karth, I bought him the Karakan Gauntlets from Tatooine. Saves all plus three and dexterity plus one. With that dexterity plus one, um, that gets him to 20 again, so I had room to swap out his implant, so I changed out the, uh, the response package for the retinal combat implant to give him immunity to critical hits, prevent any uh, major spikes from happening on him. Uh, the most expensive thing we bought for him, I think these were about 7,500, but also uh, Cassus Fett's heavy pistol from Korriban uh, was one of the items that I bought. Damage 4 to 11. It looks like it does worse than the, the standard Mandalorian heavy pistol, um, but this is upgradable, and this also has a 25% chance to stun for six, 6 seconds. That's pretty goddamn cool. Um, attack modifier plus 3, obviously. We'll go into the Hawk and we'll play around with this and see how much better it is, but, uh... Yeah, so that's that's Karth. For Candorous, um, I put the cardio power system on him. I don't know if I did that last episode or not. Um, obviously we have the, uh, the stun, the, the heavy repeating blaster that we bought him last, uh, last session, or this session, whichever, whichever I happen to string these two pieces of footage together. Um, he... As well as that, I decided to splurge on him, and I thought it was fitting that Candorus possessed a Mandalorian mask, the vacuum mask from the Yavin space station. It would give him an immunity to mind affecting and poison. Um, now, I'm not going to give him this yet. I want to have the final conversation with him so far, so we'll just stick with his neural band for now, but it is, it's, it's a very nice mask, and uh, we will see it on him eventually. Just not, not just yet. Um, you know, kind of a, as a symbolic gesture, I suppose, to don a Mandalorian mask going into war with the Sith. I thought that was rather poetic. Right. So, Karth and Candorus are done. Let's throw, uh, let's throw Mission and Zalbar onto the party and uh, see what they have. I should note, I decided to not use the Gino Harridan, um armor, and I sold that because, I don't know, I, di I didn't like the look of it as much, for one. It had one less defense, and it was it was better, technically, but, eh, whatever. Style over substance for, for me, as always. Um, mission doesn't have anything else that's new. Zalbar, I gave him the stabilizer gauntlets to give him some more green, go with the green theming, and, uh, you know, he had um, a reduced strength amplifiers on before. It takes his damage with melee down, but who cares? He's not using melee anyway, so... He's a little bit better at, uh... at demo now, basically. Now, um... Lastly, I think... We will look at our party once more and add in the two droids, which are the probably the second most amount of stuff that we changed up on them. So, HK-47. Uh, HK is the same. We got him that energy shield last episode, I think. And um, the environment shield level 3. T3, however, I wound up buying the composite heavy plating for. That gives his defense about on, pars, uh, about on par with uh, HK-47's. HK is slightly edging him out, but not by much. Um, in addition, he inherited uh, Karth's Mandalorian heavy pistol, and we sold his old Zabrak Tystal Mark III. So, uh, two Mando heavy pistols on T3, along with this energy shield as well, level 3 energy shield. And uh, also, I sold a lot of stuff. I sold a lot of the droid upgrades and stuff that we were never going to use. Um, I got rid of some more mines, I think. No, no, not the mines. My mistake. I got rid of the um, cryoban grenades. I don't think we're going to ever use those. And uh, obviously any other spare loot, some extra raid plates and whatever, I got rid of those too. So that is it. That's all of our shopping done. And we are ready to depart for the Star Forge. But uh, for now... I guess we'll just head back into the Hawk and uh, take a look at upgrading anything that needs to be upgraded and uh, maybe having a final conversation with Candorus if the moment suits it. If not, we will have to leave it for when we land um, some other time. So, let's go to our... Uh,
let's go to our workbench. Take a look at all of our gear. I just want to make sure. So, I'm still rocking the Sigil and Opila crystals. I don't think there's anything better. I think our lightsabers are mostly fine. Yeah, Jolie's still doing his uh, droid setup, and Juhani is still doing kind of flat damage. And the Heart of the Guardian is obviously going a long way there. Uh, the only other lightsaber we have crystals in is Bastila's. She still has Ophila and Solari. Incidentally, what a Sigil crystal do better? 3 to 26 versus what? 3 to 5 to 23. I actually like the minimum damage on her a little better. But also, that gives an attack modifier of plus 3, I think. Now it's plus four. Actually, hmm. Sigil is nice. We're not supposed to have that Sigil crystal, though. I don't know where that came from. We're already using two of them. One in Jahani's and one in, uh... It might have been added in one of my... It might have been added in my, um... My Korriban, uh, items mod. By mistake, it probably shouldn't be there to begin with, so... I won't, um... I won't monkey about with that. I think we'll just pretend we don't have it and not worry about that. Alright, so let's take a look at our armors. We've got Candorus's, Karth's is good, Missions is good, Bandon's, we can unequip that, but whatever. Um, Republic mod armor. I don't know why I'm keeping that still, but it just, we've had it for so long. Everyone's good, more or less. This I could have sold, and this I could have sold, but. Eh, whatever. Um, melee, I don't think there's much we have to do there. No. And then ranged is our last little bit here. So we've got uh, the Baragwin Heavy Repeating Blaster, and Candorus is fully upgraded. Cassus Fett has nothing that he can add. So what we will do is we're going to take it from where? We'll take it from... Keep Karth. We're going to take it out of uh, Bendax Blaster, I think. And then we'll uh, take a look here. See what kind of upgrades we can get out of this. Add a scope. So that reduces the... Uh, it adds the keen bonus, so it's crits on a 19 now. That's nice. And an attack bonus of plus one, so now it's a plus four weapon. Uh, this adds damage to it, the improved energy cell, 5 to 15. I believe that's already better than the uh, the Mando Heavy Blaster. This adds another 1d4, gets it to 6 to 19. That's amazing. And then lastly, another attack bonus. So what we have here is a plus 5 blaster for Karth, 25% chance to stun for 6 seconds, crits on a 19, and 6 to 19 damage. Gotta love it. I'll quickly look at Karth's uh, gear here. I uh, also forewent the the um, the heavy or the uh, the Baragwin uh, light repeating blaster for HK. I did not quite have enough money for it, so and besides, uh, HK actually let's see here. HK actually has. I hate when it does that. He's got. Maxed out um, blaster rifle, special. I, I mean, plus two damage. It probably would have been much better to just give him that after all. But uh, I, whatever. I, I don't really care that much. Doesn't matter to me. We've got one guy with a repeating blaster. That should be enough. But Karth. Yeah, he's doing eight to twenty-one damage on his uh, his main hand here with a plus twenty-nine to hit. So that's pretty damn cool. And if we say swap those around. I actually just want to see 8 to 15 versus what? going to be more damage in the other hand. 8 to 21. So, plus 25 instead. Plus 25, plus 27. And plus 29. 
plus 27. So, yeah, we're going to go with that. 8 to 21, 8 to 15. It's beautiful. And that's it, everyone. Just going to run to the cockpit, actually. My bad. We're going to uh, talk to Candorus. Yeah, what do you want? How you holding up, Candorus? Have you given any more thoughts to what happened with Joggy? This thing with Joggy, I... I don't know. Give me some time and I'll be able to sort this out on my own. Is there something else you wanted? Huh. I didn't realize we had more of his personal dialogue to finish. I thought we had done it all. Alright. We've been together a long time, Candorus, and uh, I was thinking about when we met down in the Undercity. Or the Lower City, in fact. What was it like working for Davik? Working for Davik was like driving a spike through the side of your head. Sure, you got something new in there, but in the end, you've lost something as well. Beating up people who wouldn't or couldn't pay, strong-arming his competitors, killing who he said, it was busy work, nothing decent. You were an assassin? Assassin, mercenary. Those are names people give guys like me who do the killing to make us seem better or worse in their eyes. I've killed many people. I can't say I'm proud of it, but I have. Criminals, competitors, businessmen, police, women, children. Jedi <laughs> were a better challenge. But they hardly ever poked around in the Undercity. Until you came along. But I never wanted to challenge you. Never felt the need. Maybe I knew I couldn't win. Just like all those years ago. A wise decision. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you probably would have beaten me again. Maybe you would have. But you're not who you were back then. I can tell. You've changed. And maybe I have to. I remember a time when I could do anything I wanted. Kill, maim, murder. It was all the same to me. But now, now that I am older, I can look back and regret. I regret to tell you that I regret nothing. Ha! <laughs> Good one! That's like a warrior should. <laughs> like what you'd see in a Mandalorian. In a Mandalorian. I'm not even sure what that is anymore. The Mandalorian are gone, defeated by the Republic, and swept away by time. I look back and regret all the chances I had as a warrior. And then all the chances I've had since then. I, I shouldn't be getting like this. Not when so many other things are happening, but... It feels like... Like something has changed inside, and I don't know what it is. Ah, this is unbecoming a warrior. Let's get on with everything before I start getting sentimental or something. Is there something else you want to know? That's all right, Candorus. Nothing more for now. Take it easy. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Journal entry added. I really love Candorus' character. I, he's, he grows on me every time I play the game, and uh, I think out of all of our crew, he's probably up there. He's up there in my favorites. Between him and Bastila, and Jolie for sure. Uh, such a good character. Um, Candorus. You have had a more personal moment with Candorus. He was talking about his work for Davik, and he mentioned that he seems to have changed from the warrior he once was. It may be that the time of the Mandalorians truly has passed, and that Candorus may have to find some other meaning for his life. You may want to ask later about this. And so we shall. So we shall. He has one more dialogue after he has had time to think once we land at our next destination. But until then, it's going to be quite a long time before that happens in real time, because this is the last episode of the year, guys. And uh, we're bringing it to a close now, I think. There's nothing else we have to do. All of our business is done. Johanny is done. Candorus is done. The Giska will be solved in time, I'm sure. All that remains is to rescue Bastila 
and complete our quest for the Star Forge. Hope you all enjoyed our time together today, and uh, until next time, take care everyone. <laughs>